Isabel, founder and firebrand of the Operations Spark. Hi, I'm Lenora. I'm the creator of the Bitchy Bookkeeper. Hi, I'm Kristen Tetsi. I'm the author of The Age of the Child, and we are the three founding non-mothers of Child Free Girls. Uh, today we have a guest who we're going to call Aisha. Um, that's not her real name. She prefers to stay anonymous. She sent us an email a couple of weeks ago, um, and we were interested in talking to her because in her email, she said that she and her husband are in a really loving relationship. They're both medical professionals. Um, and in the last year, they decided to start finally trying for a baby. And what I thought was really interesting was that what came after that was, even though I never truly felt the yearning. And so I was interested in the effort to try without the yearning, but um, I want to get an answer to that later. But if I could ask, oh, actually, I'll just let you, let you say hi first, Asia, before we ask you anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi. I'm excited to be here. And I'm a pediatric endocrinologist. Um, so essentially, um, I work uh, with children with uh, hormonal conditions, uh, diabetes, metabolism issues, thyroid growth, uh, et cetera. And, uh, and yeah, and I, I work full time as an endocrinologist. I've had pretty much the past 12 years of my life have been in training. <laughs> now, now uh, past three years have been in practice full time. And of course, you're trying to always do this work-life balance. And while I'm totally happy with my life and my work, this part always kind of crops up because I'm 36. And of course, that's sort of an inevitable question. And hence, um, I'm here with that background that um, Kristen just mentioned. And what kind of, if I can ask this, just to get a sense of how you grew up and what your, um, what, I guess at the risk yeah, of yeah. not putting it, like what kind of conditioning you received toward parenthood. Like when I was a kid, um, I was raised yeah. by my dad and he didn't say much about parenthood, but I did play with dolls in a somewhat unconventional way. Okay. Um, so what was your childhood like? What kind of games did you play? Okay. Um, well, I uh, grew, so just in terms of um, cultural background, I'm Indian. I'm from India. I grew up in India. I moved to the United States uh, after my after med school about ten years ago, and I've lived here for ten years. My family is all my extended family is all back in India. It's just my husband and I that are here. We are very close with our families. Grew up in a family of three girls. I'm the eldest of three girls. We have never really, you know, it was I guess it was just the expectation that we would grow up, uh, get a, get get married. Parents were always very encouraging of independent careers for all three of us girls. Um, and I guess, again, the expectation was um, have a child, not because of them wanting us to have children, but they truly, I, you know, honestly, I feel like my parents actually believe that our lives would be enriched by having children, um, which is what also created a lot of difficulty for me because my parents have never been one to push. And this is the one thing that my mother, <laughs> bless her heart, she's, She's never asked for anything, and this is she. She asks me to try for a child because she feels that it will truly enrich my life even more. But she comes from a different place than I'm in at 36. So, yeah, that's that's kind of where I am right now. But in terms of games that I played, I don't. I'm not sure. I guess dolls as a kid, and it's like I'm not sure. I. I'm answering that right in terms of no, no. There's no, there's yeah. no wrong answer. I just wondered if yeah. there were, if there was any childhood, like if as a child you're, if you always kind of assumed that you would be a parent also. At some point, yeah. Not much thought to the parent part, but yeah, I never yearned for. You know, you have your friends around you that want to be a mom from the age age of sixteen, and that was never exciting for me. For me, it was always medicine and you know, pediatrics and fellowship in endocrinology. And I always wanted to do that. I achieved whatever I set out to do. But then this, this one aspect, as I'm sure you're all, you've, you've covered this in your previous podcast, but nothing is, nothing matters unless you have a kid, um, you know. Yeah. What is your personal feeling towards that sentiment though? Like you've, you've been, you yeah. sound very strong in how you felt, you know, pursuing your career and building a life for yourself. Yeah. And do you, do you still feel that way? Um, aside from any pressure you're receiving, do you still feel? Oh, uh, so to be honest, when I, once we started pursuing, and I think one of your recent uh, guests, I think it might've been on Isabel's podcast 
was talking about how she started this journey of infertility um, and then realized that really she wasn't that, it, it wasn't, um, it, you know, she wasn't heartbroken by the fact that there was uh, a possibility that children would not happen. So I, I feel like over the past year, going through this process of um, surgery and evaluations, I'm more sure that I'm, I will be just fine without a kid. I have a lot in my life and I, I will be just fine, I think. But I decided to be brutally honest with myself and ask myself, why do I, you know, I've got all this going. What is it that I want from having a kid? And if I'm honest, I think it's just that I don't want to be pitied. I just do not want, I get this sense, you know, this look of pity when people realize I don't have children. I'm, just, I'm working with parents all day long. I see them with their kids with chronic illness that I know have ruined a lot of their lives. And yet, and yet they go to have more kids. And it surprises me when families who have congenital autosomal recessive conditions have many kids, despite knowing that there's a high chance that they have another one. I, you know, it's, it's toxic to be quite honest. And if I said this as a doctor to anybody, I think, I, I don't know what would happen. I certainly wouldn't, wouldn't be taken well, but I'm just being, being honest. It's, uh, I f feel like it's almost toxic, this whole process of needing to have children in order to fit in and then having more children because then it gives you the same like persona. And yeah, that's, but that's where we are. And I don't, and I, at this point I'm, I'm being honest. This is not that and it, and my only desire to have a child just so that I will not have this pity. I'm sure I'd love the child if I didn't have one, but this need to be pitied is all, is, this need to not be pitied is what's driving me. It's not a good reason. But I do feel like a lot of women do it for that reason. I could totally, I could totally understand that. Um, that's not my experience, but really in anything that you do, anyone that any of us, anything that we do in life, none of us want to be pitied. <laughs> whatever yeah, choice we have yeah. right and yeah. you know i i think even parents who have like people that have kids for whatever reason yeah. they really want them they don't want to be pitied by us in the child free community for having kids you know um it's a really good point that you bring up i think we're all afraid of pity what in any of our decisions that we make whether we're single or married or divorced yeah. or whatever you know yeah. it's, it's a yeah. common feeling yeah um for whatever reason though, child free, being child free doesn't, I guess we're not there yet. And I think what you guys are doing is great because it actually highlights the benefits of it. And I think that's really what's missing, right? I'm sure you'd agree is people acknowledging the benefits of it. There's no acknowledgement of that. It's always, even the people who wish you best won't acknowledge it. My, my parents who never wished anything but the best for me, if they're telling me that this is something you need in order to experience true love and true fulfillment, I'm going to want to give them the benefit of the doubt and try and go for it, you know? And that's what I'm, I've seen numerous, numerous friends and colleagues do the same thing. And once it's like a cult, like I think Renara, you had said it's a cult, that's a good way of <laughs> I did say it that, because, yes. because once you're in, there's no getting out. And exactly. Yeah, so exactly. How, do we, how do we break the cycle? I, I don't know. I, uh, but I think you guys are on, on the path. I'm curious about, um, so you mentioned that you're from India. Yes. And yeah. India is a very traditional culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was yeah. specific in what, in what pertains to like nuclear family. Yes. So yeah. how has this pressure affected the way that you feel about having children? That I feel, oh, I think, um, yeah, families are very close-knit in India. Even marriages are more between families and individuals, to be honest. And, and you know, I, I don't think, I grew up in a family where my, my dad is atheist. We didn't grow up in a religious home, but um, definitely our families are traditional, the extended family, traditional, but not religious, you know. So we had freedom. We had, I guess, the Western kinds of freedom in, in that sense, but no, pre children were never a pressure, just an expectation. And personally for myself, it's more, my parents telling me that it will be enriching and not for any, not, not because, oh, what will the other people say, but just 
this for me myself as a woman it would be an enriching experience and that's why I wanted to try you know so I went down this path even though I never really had a yearning it's because oh there must there must be something to it and and now I'm at this point where you know what maybe I should trust my instincts and not and not go down the IVF route I'm right in the middle of that point where I'm supposed to call my reproductive endocrinologist and tell her if I want to go down that path. <laughs> you said that a lot of people around you went down that path and started having kids. Um, yes. Yeah. Do, do all of them feel, to your knowledge, automatically more fulfilled and enriched, or are they still interested in seeking other ful fulfillment? Well, they, I feel like once they had this child, the whole world becomes about the child. I haven't, I'm yet to meet someone who would actually admit to missing their freedom. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are women who do that, but really that's the minority as far as I've seen. I, I, once they've had this kid, now they've got to justify the kid or justify all the time that is spent, all the time and money and tears, literally, uh, going through infertility treatments. And then it's, then all day long on Facebook, you're bombarded with their kids' pictures, you know? Yeah. I don't see it, yeah. If you did go through with IVF and you did have a child, would you then yeah. quit, would you quit work? No, I would, I would not quit work. I would definitely maybe work part-time. But, uh, I mean, ironically, I'm, I'm in a position where I probably have enough support. And financially, I'm in a good place to have a child. A lot of women who do it are not even there. And they, and they still have so much desire to do it. You know, I, 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 I guess I, I guess my, I felt the need to write to you guys because I feel like there's so many women in my position worse off than me in terms of, you know, social and financial support who would still go through this. Mm -hmm. And that to me is toxic. You know, waste, you know, literally empty their bank accounts. I have friends in this field who who come and tell me about how the marriages are broken because of their trials for IVF, wanting to have this baby. And they, and a lot of the women are, you know, sort of like me where they never really wanted to until they were past 35. They were like, okay, fine. Everyone else has a kid. We should try this. And now of course there's all the other problems with age. And then they just mess up whatever beautiful lives they had, honestly, with this baby. It's uh, sort of tragic to me. That's, I guess that's what I would say. And now I'm here. <laughs> it is heartbreaking to see sometimes people make that decision because it is like the next step. Like the, yeah. you have to like yeah. the box. But they don't really right. think about what the consequences of having a kid is going to have in their lives, like their normal routine lives. Um, yeah. And speaking of like lives and also like in couples, I've, I've known yeah. couples who have broken up because after they have a kid, they just can't stand the pressure. Um, you mentioned that you're married. Yeah. And your husband is in the same page as you are in the sense that is he unsure about the baby thing or? No, he says uh, we should, we could try so that at least you know you tried. He's very much very supportive. He, in fact, a lot, a lot of the time I said, I kept wondering if he would change his mind going forward and reached a point where he said, I will not. And I'm happy, happy with my life, but we can try this so you know that you tried and it didn't work and at least your family will know that you tried maybe that part will be you know at least they know that you you gave it a shot you didn't just give up on this on this thing <laughs> again it's that part is family treasure i suppose but he's he, i truly believe at this point he's he's happy the way we are and he's seen our friends with kids all we really do not envy their lives even though they say different we because we we we, we value our freedom as you guys have said previously on your podcasts but but I, I can I can easily see how people would be in my position and go through IVF and have this baby and then and then the cycle is perpetuated you know that's what that's what's so interesting because you, you are really lucky to come from such a family that that like the way the way you grew up um considering the culture that you're from and how that's often not the case so yeah it's like, you know, you, you've been given such an awesome, strong foundation. And I'm not going to say it, please don't ruin it by having a kid, because I'm not going to say that would happen. Um, but yeah. it just, I mean, you, you are in such a fortunate position. And this, is, this conversation is really interesting, because I've never spoken to anyone that's truly at a crossroads can go either way. 
Um, yeah. Now, and you have two younger sisters. Yeah. Where are they at in their own lives with having children? Are do they feel the oh, call? Not really. Or? No, they're not. Uh, they're not that uh, into it. <laughs> They oh, they don't want not, kids either. They haven't made a decision one way or the other, but oh. it's not their that's not their priority. You know, it's just not. And uh, yeah, huh. so they just ha they're just having a good they're just having a good time, and they don't feel the need for it. And kind of exactly where I am. Wow. But, uh, <laughs> it's and that's I and I see more and more friends of mine, uh, colleagues of mine in my you know in my field, uh, you know, uh, people my age, all in the same boat. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, in this small, can, I, can, I can only imagine how many women across the world are doing this for just, just because everyone else convinces them that they don't know true love until they've had this baby and then they'll know what life's about, you know. But then nobody <laughs> ever gets to ex experience true freedom, if you think about it, because your parents have had children. I'm assuming yeah. they wanted children. I'm assuming yeah. that's something they wanted, yeah. okay? Yeah. And they've given you guys such a great opportunity to explore life in a different way that yeah. you know, then it's like, okay, well, okay, then we decided to have kids. And then, yeah, that cycle keeps repeating and nobody gets to explore the alternative. Right, exactly. So, you know? And, and <laughs> for me, that's what's always called me is what else is out there? <laughs> right, yeah. It's you have a lot journey. Of you know, right. our lives aren't complete at 36. We're all finding talents and abilities and opportunities decades beyond our current ages absolutely yeah so. yeah and children i mean honestly the antenatal the philosophy of antenatalism actually makes sense to me um although that is now something i i could never say as a pediatrician but uh <laughs> you know i if you think about i mean you know what is all i guess the child-free state is acknowledging that you don't need to have a kid to be fulfilled and happy and antinatalism is kind of just pushing that extreme right i don't know what each of your individual views are on antinatalism one doesn't i guess preclude the other yeah. right um but to me for a person like me for whom antinatalism actually makes sense i'm still here i'm, I'm here i'm at i'm thinking of ivf you know mm -hmm. so i can only imagine the, the billions of women around the world who are doing it for much for much less but I'd like to ask you about the pity fear if I can um yeah if someone were to say if some if you were to tell someone yeah. I'm married you just mm -hmm. say I'm married and they look at you and like oh I'm so sorry would that bother you oh them uh no I mean if they thought that marriage was not was pitiable yeah oh that wouldn't be, again no that's, okay uh, so yeah I guess I'm wondering why it bothers you so much if they pity you for not having kids. Like why that's such a strong, um, such a strong motivator when it comes to you're even considering having kids when you don't necessarily want them. Like why, actively, I don't, yeah. passionately want them. Yeah, I think it's probably for the same reason that people with chronic illness don't like to be pitied. You know, but, I, I. But if you don't want a child, not having one is nothing remotely close to a chronic illness. What I, what I mean is. Um, yeah, like if you are content as you are in your marriage, and if someone said yeah. they pitied you because you're married, that wouldn't bother you because that would seem absurd. You're perfectly happy. Yeah. Um, so I guess what I'm wondering is why it bothers you to that extent if people pity you for not having a child that you don't passionately want yourself. Well, I don't. I guess uh, marriage. The marriage. The question of pity with marriage has never come up. Um. It's more of a okay, yes or no? Are you married? Not married? The pity, the pity bit comes up when when kids. The question of kids comes up. Right. You know, the marriage. I I don't. I don't know if you come across pity looks about marriage. I've never. No, no. Honestly, that's, yeah. No, not at all. And that's the thing is, it well, actually, some people do pity people who are married because they think it's the worst institution in the world when it's all this mm. whole plan. Yeah. Right. The thing, the yeah, thing is, yeah. because I like being married. If someone were to pity me. I would think that was ridiculous and it wouldn't bother me. And if someone mm. were to sub, to express pity because okay. I don't have a child, yeah. that also doesn't right. bother me because I don't want a child. So I'm just wondering why it bothers okay. me so much. Oh, I guess because as um, maybe there's a part of me that's still wondering is do my parents really have a point? These again, I guess a lot of it is influ my parents have a lot of influence. In, yeah. I guess in my because they've always only been supportive, you know, and I have no reason to think that they would tell me something 
that wasn't in my best interest. So I guess there's a small part of me that's always wondering, okay, maybe this is something that's really going to make a difference, I suppose, you know, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm less and less on those lines now, but that was kind of what it was until now. I see. Yeah. And it does sound like your, your parent, I'm making an assumption here that they have found fulfillment in raising of, um, raising children. Your parents right did. and my yeah yeah they did and that was you know we were their whole lives in the sense okay. that my mom was a stay and my mom was a stay at home mom for us as is traditional in India and uh, you know and I feel like if you're you know, so she's she's coming from a different place where for her she can't imagine life without the children but I'm in a very different place than she was so yeah and that yeah. that is something to highlight though I don't think that that gets mentioned enough like I had a stay at home mom also. And yeah. I don't know if she had any other goals or aspirations. I mean, she went to college and, you know, that and she worked, but um, I don't know if she had big dreams outside of motherhood, but, you know, our generation and younger generations and even certain older ge people in the older generations, yeah. you know, there's a calling for different, for more, for, to explore what else is out there. So, yeah. um, I think it's important to, to highlight the fact that because your parents did and do get fulfillment from raising children that explains yeah. why. And like you said, they're not pushing you, but yeah. they do have that point. But if they were in your situation, yeah. seeing and, and, and having a, a different perspective as you do, I yeah. wonder if they would say the same thing. Yeah, possibly not, probably not. And this is, this is the thing right now, the cycle propagates, right? I mean, what about, and you had, you know, we were, I was listening to your thing about the bingos. What about families who say, yeah, I had kids because I want them to take care of me when they're older and my kids are fine with that. And I, I mean, honestly, I'd be fine with it too if my parents told me they wanted us to take care of them when they're older. But that's another, that's another response to the bingo, I guess. Mm -hmm. Do you want to have kids only because they'll take care of you when you're lonely and old? Yes. And my kids are fine with that, you know. Well, I, I was fine with taking care of my dad when he needed it, but if, yeah. if his sole reason for having me was so that I would be there at that particular time, I don't know if I would like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I guess I should rephrase. I guess it means that, of course, that's a, as an added benefit, I guess, you know? Yeah. As an, uh, yeah. So there is a large uh, or growing child-free movement in India. I believe uh, 2018, yes. they won International Child-Free Group of the Year. Because this year was oh. Russia, so last year, okay. oh, 2019, I think, sorry. I don't know what year it is anymore. Um, 2020, the worst year in the world ever. <laughs> right, it's 2020. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's, it's like, well, I have no idea what's going on. And I have, I live in Western Canada, and I have, I have um, over the couple, last couple of years, met a significant amount of Indian women in, in Eastern Canada, out in Toronto area, um, who do okay. have still a lot of ties to India, and they're, they're having a lot of conversations with their, I don't, with their family or friends that they still keep in touch with over there about the child free movement, the community getting involved. Yeah. Um, have you gotten involved with any, like, I mean, cause you're, you're at a crossroads. So I don't know. Do you investigate? I mean, you found us. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, I do. I do again. Yeah. And I've, I've come across, um, Neil Anand, the guy who sued his parents for one rupee. I don't know if you know about that. Because he was, <laughs> he was I thought it was, yeah, yeah. He basically said, you don't know your parents anything. And they brought you in without your consent. And we have to get this out of our heads that we owe our parents grandchildren and owe our parents, uh, were, you know, I guess, taking care of them. And we owe them anything, I guess. Yeah, the Indian mindset, and definitely, I think, across the world, the fact that we owe our parents a lot is the case right yeah it was interesting I'm, i was actually surprised that it took off so much in india given how traditional the society is and it was it was heartening to see yeah yeah it's it's cool yeah. i mean i'm all for it any group <laughs> anywhere around yeah. the world wants to have this yeah. conversation i'm all for it well it Absolutely. must have taken off so well because of how traditional it is because the more traditional a place is the more stifled you feel by those traditions and like you can't make any choices completely right. independent of what other people want from you Possible, yeah, yeah. Certainly, it could have been that kind of pushed it, yeah. I just, I'm just wondering, is there anything about becoming a mother that excites you? Anything that you like look forward to if you ever decide to have a baby? 
because ch- well, children fascinate me. That kind of pushed me into going to pediatrics. I love children as much. I mean, I, I, I think they, they're very enjoyable as creatures, literally as little organisms. And they, <laughs> you know, that's literally how I look at them. They're just fascinating creatures. They're really very res- resilient. And then they get become these really annoying teenagers. Every time I see teenage patients, I'm thinking I dodged a bullet here, you know, but, uh, and then, and then, and then you have, then of course you'll get, you get hit by the wave of every morning you wake, wake up to a wave of look at my kids and how wonderful my life is. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> it's everything I've ever wanted. <laughs> you know, it's just this uh, up and down, back and forth. How do we break this? Uh, how do we break this? I don't know. I, I think if, Honestly, if if some if if they were if my parents had just said, forget about kids, it's not an, it's a non-issue. I would have been this decision would have been so much easier for me. I wouldn't be thinking about putting thousands of dollars down the drain, literally. It's not it's not even just thousands of dollars down the drain. It's kind yeah. of trusting that they are right, that they know what will make you happy better than you do, and that you are willing to risk the complete direction of the rest of your life. Because yeah. They're maybe not trusting that you're perfectly happy the way you are. Right. Yeah. I, I yeah, I've, I've told myself this and it's, it's such a strong conditioning, I guess, you know, but I'm, I think I'm slowly getting out of it. I, what do you guys envision going forward in terms of expanding what, you know, how, how what, what can we do to make this more, or would you, even if I, you know, honestly, even if I ended up going through IVF and having a kid, I don't think it would change my views on the choice. You would be child free you know, in, in spirit. Yeah. Like Kristen has always alluded to, that yeah. being child free is a mindset. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, no, it's, it's like our, our vision, I mean, for the show or just for what we do with the child free community, is that what you're wondering? Yeah, I, I, I guess with the, show, with the show, I mean, I, I know you guys are collaborating, you each have your individual sort of, uh, platforms how do we make this the norm right it's only uh, we how do we break the cycle i, I don't well, it's a cycle right it's a vicious it cycle. is and it's, yeah. it's by talking about it and this is why this is why like i stopped participating in private facebook groups and everything i do is completely public everything and i'm not interested yeah. in doing secret little groups and communities and I, there's a there's a place for it i'm not knocking that it's just i'm at that point where the reason why i spoke out publicly is because I didn't see anything. And not everyone has like hours and hours to search for something secret. Like, yeah, I want what whether whether you have a child or whether you know, I, I got a, I get emails from parents. And we yeah. talk about it. We talk about both sides, not arguing, we just state where we're at. And it's just yeah. those conversations. And like you said, you had told a couple of your friends about the show. I mean, it's, it's that it's it's putting things out there is just having that dialogue. That's how yeah. I see it um, breaking the cycle. And even on my personal Facebook page, none of my family and friends really pay attention to what I do, but I share that I do this show and I share the behind the scenes of what yeah. I do just so people are aware. And I say why I do it because they don't, they're all parents. They don't understand that. Sure. They support me, but they don't yeah. get why I need to talk about it. But the more you do it and then they kind of go, Oh, I know someone yeah. that doesn't want to have kids. Maybe they'll go read something you wrote or, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just having that conversation because yeah. you're bringing up so many good points, especially with the parents, because you're feeling it from your family. How many other millions of people are feeling that from their families and way worse situations and way more, right. you know, oh, yeah. this, this yeah. is the, the vocal aspect of it. And I've always been in trouble for talking too much, but I'm not going to shut up about this. Story yeah. It no, it's so, great. Yeah. important and i think whether it's writing an article yeah. or sharing an article like if you don't want to make something yourself talk about yourself share what yeah. someone else has done that speaks to you right. about this subject that is how yeah. it starts and then who yeah. knows like we can't control what's going to happen but the more that this gets shared and at least people are aware of it yeah you know yeah. that's a big yeah. thing right and even in the in the medical community i I wish I could just tell my patients that I choose my parents, my patients' parents that I don't want to have a child. But you know what the kind of response would that would bring, you know, or elicit in a lot of the in, in a lot of the families. That I think is that's that's another tragedy. 
Is I can't tell them that, them yeah. Trusting you as their child's doctor? They would have doubts, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Actually, yeah, I wanted to I, ask you know, something. I know you're, yeah. you're not an OBGYN, but yeah. there's a lot, of, a, a lot of us have had the experience where we've gone to ask for an IUD or even to inquire about sterilization. And of course, the doctor gets that we get pushback from the doctor going, well, what if you meet yeah. somebody that wants to have kids? Or what does your husband think? Or, yeah. you know, yeah. maybe you'll change your mind. I have a male yeah. doctor and he's never given me any crap for anything. Whatever I want, he lets me yeah. do. Yeah. And I had seen a female doctor first and man, did she grill me, <laughs> you know? And yeah. I just find, and yeah. again, I know this is not your area, but you bring up a good point about the medical community because a lot of yeah. women have yeah. that pressure from their doctors to reconsider. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. and now is that okay? And I, I know I'm. You're, you can't speak for everybody, but is that yeah? Is that from a medical standpoint, or do you think it's from personal viewpoint, like whether they believe that children are necessary, <laughs> and so like? Oh, it's actually honestly, it, it it sounds very much like a personal viewpoint because in this day and age, at least in America, practicing med when you practice medicine and you can document that an adult patient has clearly stated that she understands the pros and cons of a procedure. There's nothing that stops a doctor from proceeding with that operation or oh, okay. that, that put, yeah, there's really, yeah, it's an elective procedure. You can choose to have it as long as you clearly sign a statement that you understand that you may not have children in the future because of that. Okay. Or will not. <laughs> yeah. That and wow. <laughs> because there's yeah. how many <laughs> yeah, times do we hear from people? Yeah. And I mean, on Isabel's oh, yeah. podcast, I know Isabel, you've had a few people like that that have gone through that. I know. Oh, that's ridiculous to me. Yeah. 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 It's a big deal. I mean, Even in Canada. Like you wouldn't think so, but it is. It happens here too. Yeah. I mean in pediatrics, I remember in training, a lot of pediatricians said would tell me, older pediatricians would tell me, and the day you have a kid, you will become a better pediatrician. And I beg to defer. I think I'm a better doctor because I'm I give all my time to my patients. I'm not being pulled in a hundred different directions because of this. I don't think I'd be as as efficient as I am if I had a child. I certainly don't think so. What if you were to say that to your patients' parents? Like, not just, yeah. I don't want to have children, but, oh, no, this is so rewarding to me. It, like, I love dealing with yeah. more children, everyone's children so much that if I were to have my own, it would take so much time away from this very important practice. Yeah, I will, I will, I think when I come, when I reach a point of, you know, telling them that I'm not having children or that I've, I've stopped, I mean, I guess I probably, I probably won't have a child. I, I don't know where, my chances are pretty low from what they told me anyway. So that's kind of what I will kind of rehearse telling my parent, patients. It's so, it's amazing how, how sensitive they are to this, to this whole, whole not your pediatrician doesn't have kids and doesn't want kids. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's it's bizarre to them. And I suppose and they might look yeah. at it as like an, an accountant who doesn't do their own taxes, like who never files their own taxes. You know. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I, I, but, I get where they're coming from because I and most people yeah. don't think too much about this, right? When they have a child, they don't they don't give this much thought. They just do it as they do it without much thought, frankly. But this, so. this is why, yeah, but this is why this conversation is important because people just yeah. don't know, they don't understand. And I, and if this were part of a curriculum, if this were part of everyone's upbringing where you just know it's a choice and you, if it work, if it speaks to you, do it. If it doesn't, don't yeah. do it. Then, yeah. well, then we'd be all out of a podcast, but, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know. this, this is why it's important because people, oh, I, I lost my thought. Uh, but yeah. when you're talking about your patients and they, and, or the parents of your patients and yeah, like the blanks look blank looks that they would probably give you like, what? <laughs> it's just, yeah. Yeah. You know, That's, it's uh, kind of there. That's it. Um, yeah. I mean, a, a, a male OB wouldn't get, I guess it's not the same, <laughs> no, but as a woman, as a woman, I don't think they would, you know, they wouldn't ask a man, a male pediatrician if they had a kid, I don't think, or if they wanted a child. But me as a woman, what am I doing without a kid and looking after kids, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, but I think that's a little invasive of your privacy as well, because I mean, right. you're going to live. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. suppose that you really wanted a child that you had in your mind, you had in your, you had your mind set to become a mother and you're going yeah. through IVF and the doctors have told you it's not going to be easy. Maybe there's a high chance you're not going to become a mom. 
And then you yeah. have all these people asking you, why don't you have kids? So it's a little bit, yeah. I yeah. mean, I know it's uh, people who do it all the time. Right. I mean, I just, I, I always wonder, how do you not, how do you not know that this woman is, woman has endometriosis or, or had, had uterine cancer or cervical cancer or something, you know, how do you just, how is it so blatantly, how are you so blatantly oblivious to this? I don't, I don't get it. Uh, but that's, that's, that's the state of it. And it seems know, to be because yeah. everybody makes having, makes their kids, as you said before, their entire life, not every parent, but a lot of them do. Where yep. That's their yep. entire world. And suddenly yep. it's like you're yanking their entire world away from them. You know, right. it, um, so there, there's a tragic thing that happened here in my city um, a couple days ago. Uh, a teen boy drowned in a lake and the mother was on the phone speaking to the news reporters. And oh. she just, I mean, she was completely shattered. And the word she used, and I, and I hear this with a lot of cases like this, like on the news, the parent says that that was their entire world. Like, yeah their entire world and they don't know how they're going to live beyond that. I know we're getting off topic a little bit, but, but yeah, I just, yeah. there's, there's something, there's something about that, that yes, it's a tragic event and I would never wish that on anybody. And I've known people that have gone through that, but those words, yeah. your entire world, that has always baffled me. So I guess I wanted to ask you because you're, you know, you're making a decision. Um, yeah. Like that, that phrase, the entire world. And we never yeah. know until you have kids, I guess, but it just, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't like that feeling I get when I think of it. Exactly. You're kind you kind know? of, yeah. When you, ha I think when you have a child, I think biologically you're going to, you're going to love it a lot. Uh, but, uh, and you're going to, your whole world to some extent will revolve around that kid. I guess if you have a career of your own, that you're less of a risk of being an empty nester and being miserable when your kid is 17 and wants nothing to do with you. But, uh, uh, but yeah, that's the thing. You you get into you, you start digging yourself a hole, right? The, by by creating this thing that you're going to love, and then you'll be attached to it, and then the the heartbreak that follows, I guess. Yeah, because it's yeah, I don't want to. I don't want that. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, and that's um, I think also I, I I see how much I worry for my parents as they grow older. And I don't want to have a child and have them go through that for me as they grow older. I wouldn't expect them, but I'm just saying that I feel that if you're close to your parents or close to your 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 offspring, you're going to invariably take on some pain from their loss. So, oh, for sure. Um, yeah, but but I, you still have an identity. You're still a, a person. You still have yeah. There's life flowing through you, and you should explore yeah. that outside of yeah. The family. I mean that that's just, my job for you viewpoint but I believe yeah it you know? yeah 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 I wonder if yeah if, if more I think if more parents would be on you know kind of forthcoming that would be probably the next biggest step but no I, I'm sure you, you said you have people parents writing to you but they don't want to want to come out so to speak right yeah it's a and, and yeah usually the other day I had somebody dm me and she was like because I, I was traveling for three weeks, like road tripping. And she's like, just so you know, you don't have, you, you can have kids and still travel. It started out like that. And then she went on this yeah. long kind of thing. And then I, I replied to her back and told her why I, I, I am public about not having kids. And then her next response was telling me all of the judgment she has received from other people for leaving her child with her grand with the grandmother while her and her husband took a trip just the two of them so it came from a place where she was feeling so heavily judged and pressured for her life yeah. choices and something i wrote had triggered it and it ended up ended up being a very nice exchange we parted friends it was we just you know hurt each other out but she was coming yeah. from feeling severely judged for her choices <laughs> as a parent right, so you, you know you're gonna so, be judged either way yeah. yeah yeah exactly so yeah uh it never ends, no, no matter how, whatever you choose, you're still going to yeah. hear about it from something. But, uh, but I can see why, like, she would never want to say that publicly because, right. yeah. you know, she was feeling so burdened and she had a few other things she wanted to say about the, the child thing. But I, I, you, I get a lot of that and it's right. not, yeah. they just want to, they just want to say something that's bothering them. So yeah. it starts off sometimes a little bit hostile, but usually ends pretty peacefully because they just wanted to, they just want to express themselves. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. what any of us want to do. So. Right. Yeah. What do you, 
when you say, you know, to give, I think Isabel was saying this about giving zero fucks, right? <laughs> yeah. Can you, can you truly, if you're a social person, can you, can you truly do that? I guess is my, that's something I've struggled with. I, I don't think as a, I, I mean, I'm, I work with families all day long. I'm a social person. All our friends, most of our friends have kids, except for a group of us who don't. How can you truly give zero fucks about what people think of you unless you're willing to kind of start a whole different social circle? You know, it's, I guess it's doable, certainly doable, but it's hard. I mean, it is. And I think, I think Aisha, the, the key there is that if you are completely sure of your decision and you trust yourself enough to know that that is the right decision for you, then yeah. it doesn't matter what anyone throws at you. And I have the same friends I've had for a long time. Yeah. Um, I, I do hang out with people. I'm not very extroverted, but I do like hang out with more or less the same people. And yes, yeah. sometimes I get the odd comment, but I've learned to just like let it slide because honestly, nobody else is going to live my life for me. You right. Know? Yeah. And I can't, and I can't live the life that, anybody else wants me to have because they're not going, they're not going to be the ones who have to deal with a kid. They're not going to be the ones who have to deal with waking up at three in the morning to feed a baby or, you know, have a screaming toddler in the middle of a restaurant because you yeah. know, he wants, I don't know, nuggets and whatever, you know, there's right. just, yeah. And, and because it is my life and it's so precious and it's just one. Yeah. After a while, for me, it was like, you know what? I don't care whatever I hear from anybody because yeah. this is what makes me happy. So in the end, right. it's all about finding that, that thing that yeah. makes you happy. Yeah. And I think this big thing about, and you guys have alluded to this a lot, how do we, this seems like such a simple concept to me, but it's crazy how people don't understand it. Having a kid, ha not having a kid is selfish. <laughs> There's nothing more selfish than having a kid. I mean, it seems, I think we all get that pretty easily. But it amazes me that people just cannot see it that way. I guess because they've given, they, they say, oh, I'm sacrificing everything for this kid. But you, you made the kid, so you, sh you probably should be sacrificing some. But I, I think it's because yeah. they had the kids because they thought they had to. Yeah. And, and then so, now they're justifying? Or? Well, no, I think, I think if, you, if you have been raised or conditioned to think that having a child is your duty, Duty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then anyone who's not doing it is not doing their duty. And I think part yeah. of it really is, I mean, if they're going to call it selfish, they almost have to be coming from the perspective of why did I have to do it and you get to get out of it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I hope, I mean, no, and one I guess some, friends, yeah. none of my friends who have kids who wanted their children and love motherhood, not a single one of them has ever even hinted that my not having kids is selfish and they're very supportive of and understanding of people who don't want kids. They don't even think about it. It's not something they think about. They don't concern themselves with it. They don't care because they're happy. Yeah. They're happy where they are. I think okay. it's the ones who yeah. aren't happy where they are who, who think, I mean, who feel a little bit of envy or resentment toward people who, who get to do something different. That's the same. That's right. Me. Yeah. I, yeah. Same, same situation. Um, anyone that's truly been supportive, whether family members or friends, or uh, my bikini waxer, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, who has yeah. kids? But she, she yeah. after a year and a half, she's like, you know, I finally understand why people don't want to have kids. And so she was all cool with it. But yeah, they are the yeah. ones that are supportive. And like Kristen said, they don't, they don't care. They're happy that you're happy, bottom line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh... I think in the medical, it's it's crazy that in the medical community, it's so, for want of a better word, backward, you know? It's, that is true. Um, yeah. It's very much pronatal for whatever, I mean, <laughs> not, 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 not pro-choice particularly or an, anti-abortion or anything like that, but just very much, you should, you should certainly want children, especially in the field of pediatrics. Mm -hmm. And is that only if you're, but, or do men get that also? I haven't had any of my male colleagues really have that bother them, but a lot of my female colleagues are in the same boat as I suddenly get that. And, so, and a lot of them will just say that they're married or have a child just to shut the parents up. Um, <laughs> wow. It's not, I mean, it's, it's uh, unfortunate, but that's, 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 that's the truth. 
is that coming from within, like, is that coming from patients or from within the medical community? Like doctors, uh, fellow doctors are saying, and maybe male doctors are saying, when are you going to have a baby? Oh yeah, certainly male doctors will, will, will comment, especially senior doctors will say, you know, you, like I said, you, you'll be a better pediatrician when you're a mom, you know, you'll, you'll understand better. Fuck you, guy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Who's talking, right? Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> So that's certainly that's the sentiment at the moment, but I'm hopeful, you know, people, more and more girls, my, I guess, my colleagues at work, a lot, there's more and more of us who have no children at our age, you know, so I'm hopeful that this is just sort of the, the in-between generation and going forward, we'll have less of this. Absolutely. And on a side note, I'm like, it's so easy when it's the guy saying, oh, you'll be a better pediatrician when you're a mom. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. How, easy, how easy is it for guys to just throw that out there? Not even oh, not yeah. even in the medical profession, just any guy. It's, any guy, yeah. yeah. They just yeah. throw it out there like it's nothing because to them it is nothing. They don't have to right. deal with 90% yeah. of the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And not to bring, you know, not to bring religion into it, but again, that's a huge role also in, oh, yeah. in, in, in duty, you know, you're, you have a womb, what do you, you know, that's exactly. your duty. Yeah. So that's a, a lot of things that we can't, we can't change at that point. I mean, when, when it comes to that, when they throw that at you, there's not, there's not much to discuss there. But, uh, yeah. Well, as we all sit here with our currently empty wombs, um, I just want to thank you very much for, for, for agreeing to talk to us and for coming on. And this has been really really interesting and illuminating and I thank you. Oh I'm mean, gonna you guys have helped me more than, more than you know. Um, I just I I'm just ha I'm glad you let me chat. I have not had an open conversation like this with anyone recently. So this has been very, very helpful to me. Thank you deeply. Well you're welcome and, and thank you again. This is it, it, these conversations help all of us. Like yeah. You know, we we don't sit here as experts, really, but we we just love having the conversation. And every time, like our our minds expand even more on this too. So, um, yeah, yeah. Like, thank you for for like for keeping this conversation going and for sharing what you have had and you know whatever decision you make. Like it's it's good that um, you will you will still carry on a child free spirit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I certainly will. I because mean, I you think... understand, you know, and that, and I think that's also important too. That people that do have kids, yeah, also share that with their children. That you know what? Yes, yeah. That that is all. That is that is equally helpful, in my opinion. Oh, Maybe absolutely. And raise it to be an antenatalist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'll probably say you can sue me for one rupee because you. I, I didn't ask you your permission. Uh, yeah yeah but uh, yeah well anyway it's been a it's been an honor and a tr truly a, pre a pleasure talking to you guys thank you for doing what you do really thank you thank you thank you for coming on it was a pleasure having you all right that is it for this episode thank you for being here if you have any questions you want to ask or any comments you want to add uh please feel free to email us anytime at childfreegirls at gmail.com as you know 24 hours is an email thing. <laughs> you can also visit our website, which is childfreegirls.com. Of course, you can find us all over social media. We are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We are on Twitter. We are on Pinterest. We are no longer on LinkedIn. And let's forget about TikTok. And also, we are on Amazon. We have a lovely book on Amazon, Child Free Girls Comfort Food for Thought. So go ahead and check that out, too. It's only $1.99 on Kindle. Yes, $1.99 on Kindle. <laughs> And as always, we have a question for you. And today's question is, have you ever felt undecided about embracing the childhood lifestyle or having a baby? You can leave your answers down here in the messages, either on our YouTube page, or if you're listening to, to this in, on one of our podcasts, you can leave it there, go to YouTube, or just send us an email where, you know, Kristen told you that you could send us an email 24-7. 24-7. <laughs> We're here for you. <laughs> well, that sounds like a little kidnappy here. So, uh, <laughs> well, I didn't mean to sound creepy. Coming for you. <laughs> We're here for you. Your child free soul. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> no, you say bye. <laughs> <laughs>
No, you say bye. Oh my God, I'm leaving. <laughs> you leave first. I'm going. Bye. Bye. <laughs>